49 Charter Street, uh, located in the north end of Boston. We, um, once again, for the record, Dan Toscano. Uh, I represent uh, the owner of Sim, Sim Weller. Um, unfortunately, Mr. Weller, who attended the DLC, could not be here all week. Uh, had a, uh, his mom had passed and was traveling for services. Um, so he apologized for not being here. Um, Mr. Weller is here, represented by Phil, Phil Celeste. A lot of people, uh, most people here in the room know Phil. Uh, real estate agent here in the neighborhood, located on Hanover Street. Um, Mr. Weller has purchased the property a little bit, maybe close to two years ago, and uh, this, the building has been empty uh, except for one uh, one resident, which is in the lower level. So we filed a long form application to change the legal occupancy of this particular proposal. Right now, there's six residential units. Uh, each residential unit is three units in the front, three units in the back, all two bedrooms. Here we are. Sorry, I'm moving a little quicker. So this is 49 Charter Street. This is 47. This is Foster Street. 57, the Michelangelo is right here. So those who, and this building goes all the way back, not just to the gray, but all the way back here. And the reason why it's different colors, this building right here, the back of the building is about five feet lower than the front of the building. So. Uh, the existing conditions, like I said, there are 12 bedrooms. Every unit is a uh, two-bedroom residential unit and one bath. So what we want to do is change the legal occupancy from a six-family residential unit to an eight-family residential unit. How are we going to get to eight-family residential units? There is a lower level. Lower level that's um, occupied by the sole occupant um, who's been there uh, for at least the last 10 years. Um, and he's the former owner of the property uh, due to some um, mental health issues and uh, conditions. Uh, he's been in that lower level unit for all this time and Mr. Weller has been the only one who purchased or was able to purchase the property and give this gentleman a life estate in the property so this, he doesn't have to move to find, find a new uh, place to live and he preferred to stay in the lower level so what we want to do is renovate the lower level legalize the lower level farm so he can remain there in the life, uh, life tenancy. Um, that unit will be a one bedroom residential unit as a, I'll go through the floor plans uh, uh, further further on. So it'll be a one bedroom residential unit. It's approximately about, is 55% of the living space is above ground so they'll have some full windows on the on the side in the, in the alley here and he has a, a few means of at least three means of egress uh, and entrance. Uh, two in the front, one in the side. So moving forward, I went through the uh, the proposals. The, the lot size is 1,687 square feet. A uh, little locust map here as they went through it. This is our building, 57 Charter Street. This is uh, the corner, 47 Charter Street and Foster Street building. This is the single family. It's about 35 feet in height. This is uh, the Martinetti De La Russo building. Um, which recently had their one-story addition. This is 16 Foster Street. There's an alleyway in the back here that goes back here, Michelangelo. So everybody knows where we are. Um, another aerial view, site pick, as you can see. The building, like I said, is, is empty other than the, the former owner that's living there now. Um, violations that were incurred by, by changing the, the legal occupancy. One, of course, is parking. We're adding two residential units, so we have to have two parking spaces. Once again, we have no on-site parking, um, so we're not going to create any, so it becomes a violation. Uh, the next violation is open space. We are not proposing any roof decks or any open space for this particular property. Once again, for the reasons I think we heard in the last proposal, um, and, and that's why we, we stuck. This is a multifamily residential subdistrict. The open space requirement is a little bit more. It's 100 square foot for a residential unit. Uh, so if we do the map with eight units, you need 800 square feet. We just not uh, have no desire to put the, the roof decks on. Um, the roof structure is a violation. Adding a, well, adding the one-story addition, the eighth unit would be on top. That's a um, uh, the of one-bedroom residential unit. By adding that one-story addition to the residential building, that creates a roof structure. As I said in the last proposal, you uh, change the knowledge of the, the current roof structure. The floor area ratio, as we all know, I just said it about it's three. Um, with, by adding the living space into the basement, uh, legalizing the low level in the 600 and some 664 square feet on the roof um, top, we go up to 3.7. So moving forward, here's a rendition of how it's going to look. So this is the Charter Street view from from the roof line here to the back of this particular this. Uh, 
structure is 21 feet. The reason why I didn't go there is because there's an existing head house there. So the building has two head houses. It has one in the front and one in the back. What we're trying to do is build the addition in between the two head houses so we can utilize the stairwells that are currently there. So this is just really being remodeled, but going back here is 21 feet. And in the back, it, it sets back from the roof line about 10 and a half feet. So it's set really in the middle of the building. So that is our addition here. The biggest impacts that we've seen as going forward is really on, uh, and we've been working closely with, with Joanna Daly, who lives at 57, who's the owner of uh, 4B and, uh, and 5B, a duplex unit. So as you can see, it will have an impact on, on her fourth floor windows, uh, 4B. Uh, we've also been working with the young lady, uh, who is the owner here. Um, some airflow and, and views issues. So we're hoping to continue to work with them moving forward. Um, Lot line, I mean, I'll go through it. I went through the floor plans first floor, then you got the, the lower level unit, and this is the, the back side of the property, which is just going to remain as mechanicals. Uh, there's going to be living space, you can see the, uh, the means of ingress as the main building here, and then it also, also has access here, and then there's a side exit uh, into the alley. The alley is six feet from 49 Charter Street to 57. Moving forward, unit number three and unit number two, two being in the back. What we did is, uh, because the existing conditions were all two bedrooms, we made the back properties one bedroom because of the size, the existing size. So we're just remodeling the back back units to make them one bedrooms because they're about, the f unit number two is close to 400 square feet. Moving up to unit number four and unit number six, we go 450 square feet. There are all two bedrooms, we're making them one bedroom. The front units, uh, they're going to remain in two bedrooms, but all the is going to be remodeled. Uh, building's going to be fully sprinkled uh, and up to code. Moving forward, unit five and unit six, as you can see, as I said, 450 square feet. Um, same thing, unit seven. So here's unit number eight, the new residential unit. As you can see, that's we set back 21 feet, and we set back there about 10 and a half feet, and the unit's going to be right in the middle. This stairwell here is. It's really a stairwell from as you have as you're in the front of the residential unit to get to the back of the residential unit. As I said, this this story is about uh, five feet lower than the front of the property. Um, the existing height of the building, the existing height is this front here is 34 feet, and in the back is 29 feet. We want a 10 foot addition in the front to make it 44 um, feet high, high, which is underneath the 55 feet height limit. And then in the back, as you can see, we're going up a little bit higher, really, to make it level one roof. We're going up 15 feet, seven inches. Uh, and it would, so just make the, uh, the roof line level. And that's the back of the property. And you'll get a better look at how the current structure is. So the front to the back of the structure, and then it's lower, and that's our addition. Uh, so we did a sun study uh, real quick. Spring, as you can see, spring uh, with, with no structure here. Uh, and moving forward, 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock. As you can see, by with the structure, we are creating shadows. Uh, 4B is affected by our shadows. Uh, moving forward to um, noontime, uh, just a minimum shadow as the, the sun is at its highest point. And at 3 o'clock, there's really uh, no shadow as the sun has moved. Moving forward to summer. This is existing conditions. Uh, as you see, the biggest impact is in the morning, uh, at nine o'clock, as you get to noon time, uh, no impact, and as you get to um, three o'clock, the shadow is actually coming from the other side. Um, the fall, same impact in the morning here, minimal impact here uh, at noon time, but as the sun is directly over us. And that's three o'clock, the shadow is kind of casting the other way towards us. Now. And then winter time is the biggest sh uh, cast of shadow. Existing condition impact here for 4B, possibly 5B. Um, but as we get to noon time, uh, we have some shadows here, and then the shadow comes the other way at three o'clock. Um, that is the presentation. I wanted to just turn it over to Phil for about a minute. I wanted to just speak because Mr. Weller wasn't able to be here. Um, Phil wanted to have a minute, give me a little up. Yeah, a little I, bit about Mr. Weller. Yeah, I'm, I'm Phil Celeste. I'm with RNG Realty. Um, I helped Dr. Weller. I facilitated the sale of the property to the help of the Boston uh, Neighborhood Development. 
Um, the owner has some issues, he has some health issues, and the building was deteriorating for a long time. He's been living in the lower level for over a decade. Um, he's very habitual, he really prefers to live there. Dr. Weller owns three other properties in the North End, and he's a very good landlord. He's very concerned about the neighborhoods, how the neighborhood perceives him, and how he is as a landlord. He vets, um, really strongly vets his tenants. Um, so he understands that there's a, there's, a, there's a couple people, I mean, comparatively speaking, this has, I mean, uh, as I've been to a lot of public hearings, and this has very modest impact. So, I mean, what he's asking for is very modest. Um, so, I think there's two people here that has concerns, and I think Dr. Willis could be by, quite flexible. I mean, he'd be here, his mother passed away, so he's out of the country. Otherwise, he'd be here. Um, but I think uh, what he's asking for is very modest. And uh, as far as the, uh, the building itself, when we were presented, nobody wanted to keep the tenant in the building. They wanted the building. Doctors, Dr. Will is a medical doctor, and he understood the situation. So he allowed, he worked out a situation to give uh, the tenant a life estate. So in doing so, um, I think was, you know, it's quite a task. A lot of, a lot of developers didn't want it. A lot of buyers don't want to do that. So, uh, so he's going to renovate a building that's been de deteriorating for many, many years. And I think he's going to add a lot of value to this neighborhood, to a building that's Thank been. Thank you. Well, I, I've got to stop so that okay, we sure. question sure. again, because it's so, up. So that's it. I mean, mm -hmm. thank you. Are there any questions? Sure. Oh. Yes. Are you a butter? I am a butter. I first. Yeah. Okay. My name's Christine Clemmis. I live at 57 Charter Street. Um, and there's actually a lot to like about this um, uh, this proposal. I want to thank uh, uh, Dan and, and the folks who got uh, the, the public notification on this was excellent. We all got notified of the, the four meetings. I have an objection. Yes, please. Okay. Um, so I live in the, the top floor, fifth floor here. Those are my windows in the front and the four windows in the back. Um, Joanna lives in the back, the back two levels. Uh, the Chapones, Angelo is here, he owns a 4D uh, right down there in the bottom. Um, this uh, uh, image here of the, of the height, um, I respectfully disagree with uh, the representation of that. It's uh, according to the plans, it's 10 feet above the, um, the rooftop. And I have some pictures here uh, that I've only made uh, five copies because I didn't have that much toner. But um, uh, looking out my kitchen window to the, uh, the floor, lower floor back down below. <coughs> and um, I have a, an image of my, myself standing on the street uh. holding up a uh, tape measure that shows that 10 feet actually comes up to here. So I just, I, I just disagree with the, uh, um, the rendering there. So um, uh, that building, like you said, is six feet away from my uh, kitchen and bathroom windows. Um, so that's the neighbor's head house. That's not the head house that's on uh, Dr. Wall. Oh, no, I know that. No, I know that. I'm just saying how high is 10 feet. Right. 10 feet is not that, that middle thing that's shown there. 10 feet goes up as high as that other head house. Um, and, uh, you can look at the tape measure if you want. Um, but I, um, I object to the um, uh, roof structure because it uh, includes my light, air, and views. Um, I also object to the fact that it is um, taking a building that currently complies with FAR, a little bit less than three, and by adding that unit makes it greater than three. Most projects that come in for approval um, are grandfathering in a non-compliant condition, but in this case, there's a building that does comply, and it's making a request to be non-compliant. So I respectfully ask that that uh, one-story edition not be installed there. Hi, uh, my name is Joanna Daly. Uh, my husband is John Daly. Many of you may know him. He works at Parsley Alley's Bakery. I apologize, can't be here tonight because he is working. Um, as Christine noted, I own 4B and 5B. 4B is going to be, it's five windows. Each floor has five windows that are facing that side. That is my living space. This addition, now, I think Dr. Weller is very kind for what he's doing, and I, my husband and I have no objection to fixing the building, bringing it up to code, making it nice, letting the residents stay. We have no objection to that. We have an objection to this addition. This addition is going to wipe out any natural sunlight Unit 4B will ever see again. That's unacceptable. 
I'm going to have a, if that is a six foot gap between my windows and that structure, I am going to have a wall which is now going to stop any airflow if I open up those windows from my back build, from the back window to the front. There will be no movement of air anymore. Um, I'm not going to have any more privacy. My bedroom, my kitchen, my living space, everything, in my bathrooms, they're on that wall. I will have zero privacy left. And I had to laugh when the gentleman over there said that this is going to help it, that these types of projects increase, increase what property value. This is going to decrease my property value because it now, now no longer has natural sunlight. It feels like living in a cave and it's done at the benefit of somebody who's going to make a dollar because he's making it a rental unit. This is not somebody who's owning it and going to live there because he wants to be part of the community. It's somebody who is just building on top of a unit to make a dollar at my expense, at the expense of Christine, at the expense of all of the neighbors. It's unacceptable. Um, the, the neighborhood is changing so much, and I hear from all of you about how these changes are happening and how the neighborhood is changing for the worse. We have the power to stop this. We have the power to say no more. When is enough enough? Does that look like the North End to you? It doesn't to me. And I'm, I'm just tired of everybody doing things to make themselves better at the expense of the people that live here and the neighbors and the people that and have grown up here. How long have you lived here. here? I've lived here for 20 years. My husband was born and raised here. His mother was born and raised here. And her mother created one of the biggest bakery, one of the oldest bakeries in this neighborhood, Carziales. This is just unacceptable. We have deep roots in this community. Mm -hmm. I wish that that would take Trump over renters and people making money at our expense. <coughs> Please vote no. I've been there for 20 years, twice out, more than 20 years. It's a 16 unit building. It's um, um, half of it is owner occupied. We take really good care of the property and uh, we, we, we care about it. Can I make a, can I respond to something here? People, people have to understand, a lot of people here, even my own relatives have gotten properties here at barely minimal price. People who are going to come in and take these deteriorating buildings, they're paying a lot for them. They're really paying a lot of money for these buildings. I paid so, a lot I mean, for my unit though. No, I, I, I know and you do. And I know you have a beautiful view of this, but babe, you have an, an unbelievable view. But why do we oh. suffer because we're But I'm just saying, there should be some consideration. If there should be some consideration for people who come in the neighborhood are going to improve property. Does already own the building? Yes. He owns the building now. Okay. And no, seriously, all I'm saying is there should be some consideration for a lot of people, they, they shake at the prices that people are coming in, like Dr. Weller are paying for buildings. So there should be some consideration for them, and that's it's a relatively modest... Sure. He's owned the building for a long time. He didn't, no, did he just purchase it? No, he purchased oh, it purchased uh, a few years ago. It was, yeah, you know, it had, it still, it, it needs a complete renovation. I mean, it needs a complete renovation. And he can renovate it, and that is fine, renovate it. But why do you have to ruin my life and my Well, I think he's gone out of his, I, and he's still, as I, Dan, he's still willing to be flexible with you and talk to you. He's very concerned about your, your opinions. Very concerned. My, my brother and I, my brother and I have we're as well. Home. So I represent, I own 4D, my name is Anthony Cipione, and this is Anthony Cipione, and he owns, he owns 4C, which is right next to it. So 4D, I, those are my first four windows, and 4D is, 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 is directly facing that roof line. Yeah. So what, what you don't see in that entablature of that building is this, there's a relief and a freeze that says 1903. And I think what this addition does, it looks like Hardy Plant or Hardy Board, that's, that's being added to the roof. materials haven't been decided. All right, but it looks like well, I'm, right. I'm sure it's fiber cement because you're trying to reduce the weight of that, oh. that extra story. So that's my view right there from, from those four windows. And all I'm seeing is a historically a significant building from 1903 that's being aborted with this addition, with this, with this extra story. I mean, it's, it looks like it's. It's even miniaturized in the rendering, I think. Don't you know this, at Christine? Yeah, yeah. The windows are not the right size. Look at the look at the pediments on the windows just below it on the third floor there. So, they can't even be seen from the street. That's the way they designed it. Right. Well, it's still it's fiber cement on top of a historically 160. Well, that has it. Has, the materials haven't been decided yet. On it. Uh, also, another point is that the way the 57 China Street is designed, it has units on both sides. 
So the units on the right side, they don't have windows on the left side. So Christine and Joanne's uh, part, uh, units are going to be blocked on one side, not have windows on the other side. So they're basically not going to have light at all coming into the neighborhood. Because we're running out of time. Sure. Do you want to continue to support with Stan and Leo and then come back next month and delay the vote? I mean, it sounds like. I'm not opposed to the basement or the. Well, what I'm asking is do you want to continue blocking with them? Unless he's going to get rid of that top floor, and that's what his plan, his amendment's going to be, then I want to vote for Moses. Why not? Yeah. There's a lot of slides. You can always change that. Right. Why don't we take a vote, and if it changes significantly, we're more than happy to come back to the neighborhood.